Hello, my fellow scientists. Today I'd like to talk about a game called Mist as I walk in the snow. Happy New Year, by the way. It's a little over 25 years ago this game Mist came out. And I absolutely loved it. Got it for Christmas, I think, in about 1995. And I was obsessed with it. Like, truly, it dominated my life for like three days. Wake up at eight, play for 16 hours, and crash again. And there were no, uh, we didn't have internet at the time, so there was no way to just get online and get a, get a solution. I, you were on your own. It came on a CD-ROM. <laughs> recently, or fairly recently, the company released a, a new version called Real Mist. And uh, it, it's true to the original. The graphics are moderately updated, but still dated. But they're, but they're fun. They're, they've got character. And I picked that up this Christmas while it was on Steam sale. It's not very expensive. And I've been trying to make time to play with it for a couple of reasons. One, just pure nostalgia. It's fun to go back to these places. I, I even read the books later, or at least a couple of them. They're very imaginative, especially for somebody who read a lot of books and felt like he was uh, in the universe of those books. You know, reading these, or these, these fictional books where that was literally true, where characters invent worlds in their books and then travel to them. That was very compelling for me as a kid. But the other reason that I think it's worth checking out as a game or as a piece of history maybe is that the the puzzles in this game are very open-ended and they feel like science and i don't know that i had this kind of obsession with a project until grad school like you're not given the template for the puzzle. Every public puzzle is very unique and artistic and feels like an organic part of the world. And every puzzle is tricky and requires exploration. I even kept a notebook and carefully documented my progress through the game. Kept drawings of the little symbols because things would things would turn up. You know, a little key here would mean something and a and a combination written on some wall would turn out to open another door. Even the sounds were important. What, what sounds would happen when turned out to be a real key. I don't remember much of the game anymore. It having been <laughs> two and a half decades. But I remember this one puzzle really clearly where the sounds that your little craft makes under different circumstances could be correlated and you could find the answer. And discovering that felt like, ah, oh, you know, some sort of profound scientific discovery. <laughs> so it was well done, is what I'm saying. So in Mist, you're started on this dock, on this island, and it's up to you to figure out what's going on. Catherine, I've left for you a message of utmost importance in the fore chamber beside the dock and to the number of marker switches on the island to retrieve the message. Atrus. I remember after I played this game the first time, I read the book of Atrus and learned a lot about the, the history of the world and the character. And you piece this together. And I think although the puzzles are wonderful, uh, the half of the puzzle is piecing together the mystery of how Atrus came to create and then abandon this world. So I've counted up and these, uh, these marker switches, there's one over there. There are eight marker switches. So if we go back, this is just the first puzzle. It did take me a bit to, of walking around today to solve it. But we're kind of starting from the beginning and I won't do a walkthrough. Um, there are great walkthroughs on, on Mist. But I did want to give you a little flavor of the kind of puzzles we're dealing with. 25 years ago, the graphics of this game were truly mind-bending. These days, they look, well, 
updated. Punch in the number eight. Get some more information. Atreus is going to tell us that he doesn't know what happened to his linking books, but they're damaged, and that in order to figure out how to find them, you need to go and use the tower to get the right codes. <laughs> and it's been fun to pick up again. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, at the time when it came out, I, you, you would click. It was really kind of in the style of an adventure game, which don't even exist in the way they did back then. There's a great uh, YouTube video on what happened to adventure games. I'll link to that in the description. But these days, it works more like a first-person shooter. You uh, navigate with WASD and then click things to make things happen. So it's more conventional. But uh, it actually made me a little sick to my stomach. I used to be able to play these first-person shooters for hours and hours without any problem. Now I get uh, motion sick. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best, right? Get out in the real world. Enjoy the snow. Get a little exercise. Not 15 anymore, <laughs> to say the least. Anyhow, I, I hope it's fun. I, I hope you pick it up if you're interested. If, if that brings back some fun memories, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, I, I think it's funny what ends up being inspirational. Uh, but I would say that playing that game when I was a little kid was a real, a real part of the awakening to knowing that I wanted to be a problem solver, that I wanted to take notes obsessively and discover things. If you like that kind of thing, do tune in next week. We update here at the Allen Lab every week. See you then.